Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ninjago video. Yes, I know it's been a very, very long time since I've done one of these, but I mean, it's kind of been a dry spell for Ninjago recently, so there's not really been a whole lot to talk about. Uh, and I've been working on other stuff on top of having an actual real paying job now, so I just haven't really had time to devote any any time to you know work on one of my scripted videos, so I apologize for that. But hey, we're back with another one. Right now, um, I will say I did want, really quick, I did want to do a video over the Ninjago um, shorts that came out a couple, two months ago, something like that. Um, core, that's what, the, the Ninjago Core shorts. I keep forgetting the name of that wave. Um, and, I, you know, I said, you know, all of them were released. I'm like, all right, time to watch these. I sat down, I watched them, and I went, wow, there is literally nothing to talk about here. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> like, the only notable thing is that we got our first taste of Andrew Francis as Cole. Um, he did a good job. Yeah, and that and that would have been the extent of the video. It's like, I, you know, there wasn't really much story to talk about. Is it canon? Is it not? Doesn't really matter either way, because it's probably never getting referenced. If it is canon, it's very, very inconsequential, probably, most likely. Um, you know, they didn't even really have all of the sets from the wave in the shorts. So it's, you know, just kind of whatever. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, so, what I'm going to be talking about today is the newest wave of sets that have just been revealed and the teasers, the short little teasers that have come out for Ninjago Crystallized. And, uh, boy, am I worried. <laughs> Man, am I worried sick. <sighs> I just... Mm. You know, the, the teasers for the show came out, and I was like, all right, this is looking good. It's This is not where I was expecting things to go, but you know what? This looks good. Uh, it's like they're they're actually marketing it for once, which is which is cool, which is interesting. I'm I'm really gr glad that LEGO is finally taking an interest in airing Ninjago, as I wonder if this means it's even going to be on TV, if, if they're not, if because the, I think that would be a historic move for them to finally move Ninjago off of Cartoon Network, which is a network that, for most of Ninjago's runtime at this point, has not cared about the show whatsoever. So, finally moving it somewhere else where they can either control the distribution themselves or partner with a service that actually does care about the show, like Netflix or something like that, you know, that would be that would be very welcome for the show. So I'm excited to see what, uh, what happens because I feel like when Cartoon Network was in charge of distribution, distributing the show, they were also in charge of the marketing, and that's why you hardly saw Lego talk about the TV show. And now suddenly they're talking about it a whole bunch? I, I, I don't know. I, that just feels like a big, not a red flag, because this is kind of a good thing. It's a it's a signal. It's, you know, this is a, hey, things are a-changing. And so that's a good thing. But uh, I am very, very concerned about now, about where the story of this season is going to go. And that has to do exclusively with what we have gotten, what has been re revealed for the sets, what the sets are going to be. And and some of what Tommy Andreessen has said on Twitter about, you know, in, in the past about intentionally... Or, no, the set doesn't... I think the... I think... I can't... You know what? I can't remember who said this. I think it was maybe one of the set designers that said this because they're partnered with it. You know, they wanted to put, or it's, where it was Tommy talking about talking with the set designers and saying, "Hey, can you put these figures in here to, to, to throw people off or something like that?" You know, somewhere someone said that there are figures that are in this new wave of sets that are deliberately put in to be, um, mis not misrepresented is not a good way to put it. But they're in there to distract, to confuse, as as red herrings, as, as you know, these are not. It's it's not necessarily conducive to what the plot of the season is going to be. On one hand, I understand that and go, okay, cool. But on the other, if this is true, by the way, but on the other, I'm like, well, but doesn't that defeat the purpose of making toys for your TV show? Because we sort of kind of already got a touch, a taste of this with Master of the Mountain, where you know all the box art had the Munts and the Geckles being antagonists and fighting the ninja and stuff. But then you watch the season and they're friendly, and you know they're you know they fight, but they fight the skeletons. And it's like there was a little bit of you know it's like they had to fight you know Nia had to fight the queen, and then you know they had and then 
Kai and Zayn had to go through the the months or the Gekko par- Parliament and everything, and had rocks, tiny little rocks thrown at them in the in the Mino and everything. But you know that was very very short lived, so they weren't really antagonists. They were, they ended up being allies very very quickly. So that but you know that's not really a huge deal, I don't think, because that wasn't like. It was important, but that wasn't like major plot details. What they've kind of been alluding to with this kind of almost feels like like the sets don't represent the story at all. And I don't, I really don't know how I feel about that because if that's the case, then why are you bother bothering to make toys? And 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 that's the thing is that it, that's even backwards from how it works is that the toys exist and the show is built around the toys. Now, I understand having this collaborative process of the toy designers talking with the TV show people and them kind of all being in the room together, and that's great. But I I don't know. If you're going to deliberately... If you're going to deliberately throw in figures or vehicles or stuff like that to mislead your audience... And... It's like, I mean... (laughs) That just doesn't really make too much sense to me from for the overall picture. Because Ninjago is a toy line primarily, and we get this on the most, for the most part, great show as kind of as a bonus. It's like, hey, and it's and that's still a video I want to do is it's like when did Ninjago's toy line start actually getting good? And that's one I've had planned for a while, and I and I, hopefully I'll get to it eventually. I'm just so busy now, but but it's like, but looking at all these set images, it's like they look great. They look awesome. It's like, oh my gosh, these look really cool. And I hope that, and I hope a lot of these have have some sort of cool story importance because if they do, then that's gonna make it very, very tempting to buy some of those. But at the same time, I said the same thing about like the water dragon um, from Seabound, and I never got that. It's like, oh my gosh, it's look such a cool looking set, and it's so important to the story. This is a definite get for me. Never got it. I, you know, now is actually probably a great time to go to actually pick it up because if I could actually find it right now, it's probably going to be pretty cheap. But you know, I've I've never I've never gotten it. I've never picked it up. I'm I don't really get too many Ninjago sets, and actually, the majority of Ninjago sets I have at this point that I've picked up recently have all been the legacy stuff, um, with very very few exceptions. Because it, for part partly except is because I was working on Dark Island and I needed a lot of that older. Um, Ninjago stuff because that because that was closer to the era of Dark Island I was working on, you know that Dark Island is set in, and so I was working on so them coming out with the Destiny's Bounty and a and a Golden Mech and you know the first position Master, Master's Golden Mech and everything that was very coincidental and it worked out timing wise really really well that I was able to get those and use them for that stop motion project. And so, and yeah, and on top of that, they're just great sets. So it's like, oh, cool! It's really cool to have these on my sets. And of course, the monastery of Spinjitsu and and stuff. But I mean, it's like I have like, in terms of like the the new you know, new sets that I've gotten based on the newest seasons of the TV show in the last couple of years, I have gotten two of them, three no three 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 of them. I have yeah because I have um, Chompy from Master of the Mountain. I have the little throne room battle set that that's from Hunted uh, that came with all the girls and Lloyd, which was really cool. It's like, oh, hey, it's it's the new Pixel, it's the new Nia, and the new and Skylar and her room. That was a, that was such a great little minifig set. It's only like twenty bucks or whatever it was, and, and it's like, oh, that, that was such a great set. I love it. Um, and then I have the little um, Destiny Shadow thing from uh, from Hands of Time, and that's like it. Yeah, turning around to look at my collection right then, it's like, you know, those sets are even kind of more hidden on my shelf compared to the other things sitting next to it. So, so I'm just really bad about buying the toys. So, but, you know, but, but, you know, I can still look at the wave and go, oh yeah, this looks like a really cool wave. Like the, like the C, like the C, the sub bounty, whatever it's, whatever it's called from C bound, that set looked amazing too. Of course I didn't get it, but it looked amazing. It's like, I can, I can tell that, you know, the toy designers are doing a really good job most of the time. And even, you know, the Ninjago core sets, a lot of the sets looked really cool. Even if it's like, okay, these are going to have like no, <laughs> no impact on the story whatsoever. So I don't really care. So yeah, so, you know, this crystallized wave looks really, really cool, but I've got worries about where the plot is going. And, and you know, it's, 
I, mm, it's just so hard to wrap my head around. It's like, who? what do I trust here? Do I trust what looks obvious or do I trust Tommy or whoever said that when they're saying, oh, don't you know, don't trust everything you see in the sets because it's going to be misleading. But I'm like, OK, but if you're misleading us with what's in the set, then what's the point of even releasing the sets? Because <laughs> what's supposed to come first here? What's the order of operations? Are the toys supposed to come first like it has been for the last decade or whatever? Or is the show supposed to come first? Because if we're in a new era where they are going to start prioritizing the show over the sets and they're and you know, the and the show is now what is going to inform the sets instead of the sets informing the show, and they start to go, Well, we don't want to give this plot point away, so we're going to invent this random so we're going to come out with a set that has a police officer in it. But then, like in the actual scene, it's Dareth when he get when he gets bitten by a radioactive rat or something and he became and he become, becomes rat man he gets rat powers or something I don't know where I'm get, where I just came up with that but it's like we don't want to spoil Dareth and his rat powers so we didn't put him in the set and we put a random police officer in there but then that diminishes the reason for anyone to get the set because in your effort to avoid spoilers you've now made the set less cool in retrospect because it's like oh that wasn't actually the character that was in this scene. I would have rather that had been spoiled and, you know, clapped at and gone, oh, yay, finally, this part, and it's so cool to see this come to fruition or something. So I just don't, mm, so I don't really know about that. And then if what is in the sets is true, I don't really like a lot of the decisions they're making in terms of returning characters. It's like... Some of them I'm excited for. This could make sense. I could see them doing this very well. Um, Pythor coming back, that's great. It's been so long. I've been wanting Pythor back for a while. Um, Asphira, uh, it seems like she's coming back. And, you know, because I, I've, I said, I've been saying for a while that I want a scene where, you know, there's a breakout at Cryptarium. And it's like, but no one knows who's doing it because it's like it's some invisible force like punching the guards. And then Pythor, and then Pythor reveals himself and slithers up to Asphira's cage. And it's like, it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. I think we could do great things together because they're both serpentine. They're both evil. It's like now there's a match made in heaven in terms of an evil of an, of an evil duo that would admittedly probably end up stabbing each other in the back. But I mean, you know, what, you know, it'd be fun to watch. Uh, so, so the idea of them maybe interacting here that that's really cool I, I i want i want to see that and i know asphira wasn't the most popular villain but uh you know it's it's still an interesting story direction that could go in um harumi maybe being back it's like i want her to stay dead but i feel like they do have wiggle room to bring her back considering we didn't really see her quote unquote die fully on screen yeah she went down with the building and so but it's like eh, we didn't really see we didn't see the body afterward so it's so poetically and you know thematically and everything her meeting her in there is perfect i want her to stay dead and you know her having that little computer harumi or whatever in prime empire was like oh it's, it's cool that was whatever it well, wasn't really her doesn't count but so i could see them you know doing a thing where haha i escaped at the last moment mustache troll mustache well even though i'm a girl and i don't have facial hair you know what i mean it's you know having that super villain moment it's like, yeah, I, I could see them doing that, and it could work, especially since, you know, in in the time since Hunted, Lloyd has made such a big deal, and it's kind of almost become a running joke about how he doesn't trust princesses, he doesn't really, you know, he's got all these issues about being betrayed by Harumi to where Akita complains about it in, in, the, in, the, in the Ice chapter, and then, of course, you know, he's very, he's not trusting of Vanya at first in Master of the Mountain, so, you know, the just another little, little, you know, that dagger that you know, putting, slowly putting that dagger into Lloyd that, you know, she was using in Sense of Garment on, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, guess what? And she didn't die after all. So your feelings about her are going to be even more conflicted. And it's like, that could be interesting, but you know, they left her at such a good place. I would rather them leave it there, but who knows? Maybe we'll see how, how that works out. Um, and then Mr. F, as opposed to Mr. E, uh, you know, I probably should have let off of this that there's going to be potential spoilers here. I guess I'll, I guess in editing, I'll just flash it up at the start of the video. It's like, I'm going to be potentially discussing spoilers. I don't know, because this is really all kind of speculation. If you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, don't watch. But so I guess you guys have already seen that. But um, yeah, Mr. F, it's like, is it Mr. E reborn? Is it another in a series? Is Echo Zane involved at all? That, you know, and considering how that plot point was kind of just dropped from Hunted after Sense of Garmadon, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
again, you know, if, if Farouk is coming back, having a Mr. E slash Mr. F, that, you know, that could make sense. So it's like, okay, I could see them doing interesting things with that. But the big thing that I'm really worried about, and this is almost a, if they do this, I may just be like, all right, I'm done. And and I'm not being hyperbolic when I say this. I might legit, I, I'm going to have to see how it turns out. But like my gut reaction of if they are doing this is like, okay, I'm I'm done. I just, Ninjago goes up and down enough as it is in terms of quality. As far as I'm concerned, it's like if the, and if they do this, then I'm just out. I'm done. I, I, you know, I might still watch it, watch it when it comes out. But am I really going to care anymore? Probably not. Is because it looks like the Vinge Stone Buyer is the Overlord. If you've watched my channel for any period of time, and you've you know you've watched my Ninjago videos, you probably know that I don't like the Overlord. That is a big point of contention for me when it comes to my ranking lists, when it comes to the best seasons, the worst seasons, the best episodes, worst episodes, etc. Um, I made a whole eight video series about fixing what I thought was would be fixing uh, rebooted because I don't like rebooted at all. I think that's the worst Ninjago has to offer. Um, just like it was just like bad decision after bad decision after bad decision in that season, um, in my opinion. And so them doing the same thing again, again, sort of, kind of, with bringing back the Overlord again, it's, I just, I will say that the Crystal King set, it's the big Minotaur dragon, it's like that set looks amazing. And that's like the one that I'm like, oh, the build there looks so good that I'm like, mm, it's going to be tempting. It's no matter how it turns out in the story, it is going to be tempting not to pick up that set. Because I'm like, ooh, that would be such a cool build to display on my shelf, even though I don't have room for it. But, you know, it's one of those things I'll find room. So it's like, mm, that's such a cool looking set. But I mean, really, how, I mean. I, I have never seen the appeal to the Overlord, and I know he's important to the story. But the Overlord, to me, to me, he's never worked like a grand, like, this is the end-all, be-all of villains. I know in terms of Ninjago's history, he is, he is kind of that, because he is, like, one of the original big villains from when the world itself was being created with the first Benjutsu of the Master and everything. So he's very important to the lore, and I get that. But... You know, like, I mean, him coming back and rebooted totally undermines everything about season two and everything good in season two. It's just like, pfft, whatever, this doesn't, this doesn't really matter anymore because they made such a big deal out of, out of this prophecy. And then, and then, you know, Lloyd defeats him at the end of, at the end of season two and then season three, ah, he's back. And they've never really properly explained that. It's like just this evil essence infected the computers or whatever. That's so dumb. And and I know it's a it's a kid's toy line, but you know there's so many moments where they where they prove that it's like yes we're a kid's toy line, but we're a very well told kid's toy line where you know this is not just something that only kids can enjoy. This is something that older audiences can enjoy as well. And being you know strapped for time and having to come up with a oh the Overlord's evil essence got trapped in a computer or whatever. It's like. That is just so lazy and dumb, and it's like, I get it. I think, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, like I said, I've always said, I'm pretty sure the Hegmans were strapped for time when it came to writing Rebooted. They had, you know, so it's, you know, things kind of had to come around in the last minute and everything, so they didn't have time for rewrites or whatever. It's like, I get it, but, oh, uh, I, just, I just hate it so much it, because it's it's like you, you do a rewatch, and at the end of season two, you're like, and it's like, oh, man, you know, I can't believe that we saved the day. The Overlord's defeated. Oh, man, we're awesome. Go, Ninja, go. And everything. I'm like, well, that was almost a waste of, you know, an entire half season from when, and because, of, of course, <laughs> when they actually start talking about the Overlord and stuff, that's actually when the season starts getting good and they move away from the filler episodes. So it's like, oh, well, that, now it just feels like a whole waste of time because it's like, we defeated him. I'm like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. It's like watching Transformers at the end of Revenge of the Fallen. Megan Fox says to Shia LaBeouf, it's, you know, they both say, I love you. I'm like, no, you don't. You're not in the next movie. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's just kind of a waste of time. And and so then, so they already, they've already undercut the ending of one season finale <laughs> with, with, by bringing the Overlord back and rebooted. 
So are they now going to potentially undercut a second season finale by bringing back the Overlord again? Like, I don't like Rebooted, and I think it was somewhat mishandled, but even in my even in my uh, Rebooted Reiterated series, I said that Zayn's Sacrifice is the best thing about this season. It's like, you know, it's like it was mishandled somewhat, it happens too quickly, but from the music to the line delivery to the editing of the shots and, and, and all that, it's like, oh, it's so great, and then, you know, and then Pixel realizing that Zane's alive. It's, oh, it's just so cool. It's, you know, it's, 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 you know, that, from that aspect, it's well done. It just didn't really make a whole lot of sense story-wise because, you know, everything's kind of fine and then Zane's randomly, I will destroy myself and with this thing that we haven't really built up at all. And, and but, you know, but, you know, the, the act itself and the scene was so well done. And, you know, it's like it was shocking to a lot of people at the time. And, then, and so it's like, okay, don't like the season, but, you know, for that one scene that they, for the most part, did well, you're going to undercut that, too? Again? You're going to under, now undercut two season finales with the Overlord? Can he just stay dead? And they sort of have already kind of done this, maybe, with, um, what is it called, Decoded, which are like the little web shorts or whatever, but it's like, you know, the canonicity of that's dubious, I'm pretty sure. Because it's basically a clip show, uh, so but you know it's like well, what's the Overlord again? It's like you know it's like but then but they had their little cop out thing where Zane's like no this is like the faintest memory of the Overlord that's only like a and it's like I don't even think he spoke I think it was just like you know grumble power noises or whatever so, but so so I don't really count that but if they make the Overlord the Vengeance Stone buyer and he comes back again then Zane's original sacrifice means nothing. And the one good thing and the one cool plot point idea that Rebooted did years ago now, you're going to undercut, and now there's going to be no redeeming that season at all. Except maybe the music, but I mean, yeah, that's a given. Because it's like the, the the fight scenes are okay, you know. There's some there's some cool shots, and they're like I I'll always enjoy the the water wheel going over, you know, going across the moon. You see the androids go flying. That's fun. That's funny. I like that. Uh, it's uh, you know you, you do, there's a couple good Dareth moments, but I mean that entire season is just going to be worthless because you see Zay sacrifice himself, and it's like, well that was for nothing because guess what? In however many in ten seasons or whatever, the, the jerk's going to come back again. And then there's, you know, there, you know, there'll be some line where I was never defeated at all. I just was weakened and hit away until the time was right for me to come back. <laughs> and it's like, and he's going to be his big dumb dragon. And it's like, uh, I just, it's like, they're mm, the only, the only, 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 only way. I will accept this is if there's some it's got something to do with those crystals and like reality itself is breaking like you've got a Spider-Man No Way Home multiverse situation. Uh, Doctor Strange has not been released as of the time of this recording, so I don't know how things turn out in there. So I'm using Spider-Man as my example. But, you know, it, I mean, this has got to be like Thanos snapping on top of the multiverse breaking all at the same time level of threat. And the overlord that come that that is that is brought forth is like the not even the original overlord as we knew him in season two, but like the overlord that fought the first Benjutsu master, like he's yanked out of time and plopped into modern Ninjago, and and that is the overlord that they that they fight, and like that was Pyth and you know Pythor is the one leading this plan or whatever, and yeah, and it's like Harumi's the one that figured out the crystals, and she contacted Pythor, then Pythor put together this plan to bring the overlord back from the distant past and and yoinks him from the past, and so they have to fight you know the all powerful overlord that the first Benjutsu master wasn't really even able to. to th that it wasn't able to completely defeat, and they had to separate Ninjago in two to stop and everything. That is the only way I'll accept it. If they go that the direction, fine. I'm going, okay, not happy you brought him back, but you know, that's probably the least offensive way you could have done that. That's fine. You know, it could also explain how they bring back Nia if Nia's yanked through time and they get a, and they get a Nia that's, you know, like right after she became a Samurai X and she's got a lot of catching up to do. 
or something like that. You know, it's like, oh, wait, we were dating. It's like, you know, Kai, why does your hair look different? Because the last time I saw your hair, we had, it was before the movie, so your hair looked different. And it's like, who's this lady that looks, and it's like, is that Lloyd? It's like, he was, he was a little bratty jerk the last time I saw him. He's like, and so, you know, that, that is, that is like the only way I'm going to be able to buy some of this stuff. Nia, Nia, I'm, I'm more flexible on. It's like, okay, they could, it's like, I would rather her stay water dragon for a while longer and more than just a season. Um, or not even a season. It's like, you know, it's immediately I'm done in the next season or whatever. But so, but you know, that depending on how they do it, I might be okay with that. But I'm like foot down vehemently against more overlord. It's like enough. If you want to bring back, um, oh, I can't remember the act, the voice actor's name. I'm, I'm going to remember it as soon as I stop recording. I know that for a fact. But, you know, the voice actor that plays the Overlord, if you want to bring him back, it's Neil something. Because I think he was also the voice of Tahu in Mask of Light. You know, if you want to bring, if you want to bring him back, then bring back Nauticon for Pete's sake. You've been teasing him for like four seasons now. You keep throwing that lamp in there and dangling it in front of our face. And yeah, I know he's in the little, the little story the fan fiction type thing that Tommy Andreas and I think it's Marvelous Jan have been working on but it's like that doesn't count I want I want him back in animation for Pete's sake it's like you, you keep dangling that stupid that stupid teapot in front of our faces <laughs> and it's like just have it be not a con because he's it's the same voice actor so if you want to bring back a villain that this guy's voiced Make it be Nauticon, please. That would even be more emotionally resonant for Jay and with all the stuff going on with losing Nia. So it, it makes way more sense than this stupid overlord. Uh, so, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of my thoughts on everything. I just wanted to get all these things down before um, the season actually came out. Um, I am excited to see how it turns out. I'm a little trepidatious now because of the set images, and it basically, I mean, that looks like the Overlord to me. You can't, you can't tell me otherwise. If if it's not the Overlord, then it's like, wow, you guys did a really great job designing an over an, uh, a character design that looks exactly like the Overlord. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get all these thoughts um, documented before the actual season started so that way when the season's over and I do my season review then I can look back at these thoughts and and you know see you know what held up what didn't you know am, am I disappointed in the season did it exceed my expectations it's like you know now do I have a different opinion on on the misleading us with set designs and, and many figures included and stuff like that so and also it's been a while since I've done a Ninjago, Ninjago video anyway and I thought you guys would enjoy this so uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So what do you guys think of Ninjago Crystallize? Do you think it's shaping up to be something interesting? Or are you, like me, a little more wary of where they're going with the story? I didn't even mention, like, the new random fake ninja that we've got in there. That could be interesting. Um, because, you know, that's a whole other wrinkle. So it's like, you know, there's... I legitimately have no idea where they're going with this season. And that's... On one hand, it's exciting. On the other, I'm I'm not really I'm very I'm very scared. So leave your thoughts down below. What you guys think this season could bring? If you're excited, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Will you be buying the sets? Uh, do you think they look good? I think now that we have a confirmed release date of they are coming out August the first, which is a while. So now I'm left questioning when are the toys going to come out? Uh, or excuse me, not the toys. When is the show going to come out? Because they've been doing a lot of marketing for it recently on YouTube and stuff. So I would think that it's maybe imminent. Like with, by the end of the month, we're going to start getting episodes rolling out on YouTube or whatever. It's like if they're doing all this marketing, it still ends up on Cartoon Network and they put out the entire season in like three days. I'm like, OK, well, gee, thanks. Got my hopes up for nothing. But, you know, if it does start popping up on YouTube or they announce it's like, hey, the entire season is dropping June 1st on Netflix. Or, or whatever. It's like, then it's like, okay, hey, let's go. Let's do this. And, you know, it's like HD right off the bat. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, everyone, you know, all the fans in the U.S. will actually be able to watch it for once on an official service and not on YouTube. <laughs> uh, right when it comes out, it's like, that would be great. And then, and then you have some time over the summer to let things, to let things settle. And then the sets come out. But of course... You know, if if you drop the season that early, but the toys don't come out until August the first, then what was really the point of including false minifigures in there if 
It's like, just maybe hold the reveal until after the season. So people are just like, I don't know. That's probably going to be a whole topic of discussion that I'll get into. I know the uh, the people at TTV are definitely going to be discussing it um, eventually when Ninjago, when they get around to doing the next Ninjago cast. Um, so, yeah, I'll be eagerly waiting to see what they have to say about that. Um, and I'll be, see how that influences my opinions and what the, and what the show is going to do to change those opinions as well. So uh, I've rambled on long enough. It's been a half hour. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will hopefully see you guys next time uh, very, very soon with another Ninjago video. But at this point, I never know really what I'm going to put out week to week. Um, still got other projects I'm working on that will hopefully be out soon. And uh, so I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching and goodbye.